Do you think Gear Six will be the next gen defining game? As rumors suggest, you know that's what the, that's what I think I had. Hold on, let me look. At, I felt like I was missing something. I think I did. I didn't scroll all the way back up. Here, let me open that up. I'm glad you brought that up. I felt like I was missing some articles. I missed a couple. And then here's some shit from like JG was talking about yesterday. Here, yeah, we bring that up. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um. According to Nate the Hate, Gear 6 will be much like Gears 1 Coalition. It'll be very surprising. No, there was an actual article. Hold up. I think it was on Insider Gaming. I know I've seen something about Gear 6. I guess not. Let's see. Let's type in Gears of War 6 and see what Gears of War. Uh, be shown this year. Here we go. It was Insider Game. Here we go. Uh, Gear Six could be shown this year, but people aren't ready. I don't know what's going on. Xbox have. I don't know what's going on with Xbox. You have the world's most powerful console, yet you can't give 60 FPS option. Uh, I think, I think what developers are struggling with is trying to find that balance between. A high frame rate and actually because another thing people are complaining about is the visual jump basically the consoles just aren't powerful enough because if you make the graphics too good the frame rate's going to drop but i say always just focus on performance i don't know in the most recent episode of the kind of funny uh podcast the topic of gears of war 6 came up with the host paris lily uh and lead guest jeff grubb making their predictions they both claim that something related to gear 6 will happen this summer prompting many to believe that the reveal will occur during the summer get show fest uh the verge's tom warren corroborated these claims adding more credit credit to the rumors that are swirling uh, it was claimed that the coalition has been working on the next Gears of War game, widely assumed to be Gear Six for at least a year. So there's likely a that, wait, that's all y'all been working on it for. So there's a likely a good amount of meat on the bone to reveal something during the Xbox Summer Showcase. No, did he? Speaking in a cryptic post on Reset Era's forums, user Shinobi602 suggested that Gear Six will boast mind-blowing visuals. This comment was made in response to users fawning over the screenshot of Hellblade 2. They went on to say, wait until you see Gear 6. People aren't really LOL. Uh, is it because of the Series S? Yeah, I do think the Series S does hold back gaming because it's not as powerful as the Series X. And unfortunately, the Series S does hold back not just the Xbox, but the PS5. Because the because developers have to make sure that the game works on three platforms now. So really, really the really basically everybody's got an Xbox Series S. With, and then if you have the five and the X, you have enhanced, slightly enhanced like performance. Yeah, I would, I would argue it probably is holding it back. There's no further substance to that line, but given that many believe Gear 6 will be true next gen games, it would be understandably poised to flaunt the full processing power, of whatever hardware comes to next to the Xbox. I mean, I don't, I'm gonna be honest, like, I don't really give a fuck about the graphics uh, for Gear 6. Uh, in before Gear 6 is 60, 30 FPS. Nah, Gear 6 will not be 30 FPS. I, uh, I, I'm more than, I'm, I bet you five subs, it will not be that, uh, just because, and that's not because I have any bias towards any platform, just because, uh, Gears has always ran at 60 FPS, it has to run buttery smooth, it's a game that requires, as someone who's like a hardcore Gears player, Gears requires you to have a buttery smooth frame rate, so that people can wall bounce efficiently, um, if, if it, I'm not saying it won't, I'm gonna give you one percent, I'm 99% sure that this game will run 60 FPS. If it doesn't, I'll give you that. I'll give you that 1%. It gives me space to be wrong, but I would be shocked. Basically, I would be shocked. Uh, it's going to be more gore and body discernments with God rays. Probably. And I, I feel like this game will look identical to the last one. But like what he said, with some God rays, it'll probably be a little bit more bloodier. That's where like the extra visuals will be. But I don't think this game is going to run at 30 FPS. If you play Gears, you know, like they, they do prioritize performance. It doesn't make sense for it to run at 30 FPS me personally i don't even understand why somebody is so why people are so upset about because for those of you who didn't see the um hellblade 2 is being confirmed to run 30 fps on xbox i don't really see what the big deal is because to be true be told i read that all the fights are one-on-one -on -one. there's not a lot of things going on on screen it's a very graphically intensive game so that's a game that doesn't really need a high frame rate i don't like 
uh, it'd be nice, but it doesn't need it. If you really want it, play it on PC. But if I had to take a wild guess, it's probably going to be okay on Xbox. It's probably going to be okay. Um, but this does. This does. Hopefully they do show this during the Summer's Games Fest, though. I don't know. Personally, lower FPS gives me a headache depending on the game. Look at you. You got spoiled. You got spoiled by this shit. Hide the money, y'all. Poor people around. <laughs> Who cares? Fuck console. I'm not going to say that. I play most of my games on Xbox now. I'm poor now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, just play it on PC. I see, I see JG get butthurt about this shit right here. Most iconic video game characters according to a poll of 4,000 people. Um, the source was BAFTA. Who's this? Supporting and celebrating talent in film, games, and television. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, shout out to Black Panda. I'm not going to go too hard on this. Although not as but he was saying the top five is ass. And I agree. Um, at 15, Crash Bandicoot. I'm gonna let that rock. I would say Crash is iconic. He was PlayStation's first mascot, but me personally, I'm not a big Crash fan, but I understand. Solid Snake, you spelled it wrong. I'll give you that. That makes sense. Minecraft Steve, he should not be on the list. Minecraft is iconic, but Steve is not. Most people did not know who Steve was until Smash Bros. He's not iconic. Um, Pikachu. I'd argue Pikachu should be higher. Arthur Morgan is from Red Dead, I believe. Cool. I could be biased. I'm not a Red Dead fan, but I'm gonna I'm let that one rock. I know I know a lot of people love Red Dead. I'm gonna let that one rock. But I don't know about I. But even still, I don't. Uh, no. I might have to argue Arthur Morgan shouldn't be on the list. Nah, Red Dead is a good game and it's popular, but when we're talking about iconic. So let's just, cause this is my opinion. Iconic is everybody in the chat. We going on a field trip, right? We're going to Times Square, 42nd Street, New York City. And you know, you know where they drop the ball and there's all the signs, all the, the ads everywhere. On the ads, you see a picture of Pikachu. Each and every one of us would point to that sign and say, hey, that's Pikachu. Hey, that's Mario. <clears throat> I don't think people would say that about Arthur Morgan. Uh, gamers, but he's not iconic. Nah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Same goal. And I like Boulder's Gate. I'm not going to lie. I like Boulder's Gate, but Shadowheart is not iconic. Nah, nah. Kratos. That's a 50-50. I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll put him in. We'll, we'll let him rock. We'll let him rock. We'll let Kratos rock. I think most... I, I don't want to say most. I think a lot of people. I, th I think more people would know who Kratos is than Arthur Morgan and Shadowheart. I'll say that much. We'll, we'll, we'll rock with Kratos. Master Chief is iconic. Whether you like whether you like um video uh, video games, whether you like uh, Halo or not, he is iconic. Uh, we'll let him rock. Link is definitely iconic. Pac Man is iconic. Sackboy, fuck no. Uh, would you put Joel or Ellie as iconic? No. If they have the potential to be iconic, and I'll say this why, and this, and you know, I hate even saying that because I'm so sick and tired of fucking The Last of Us. But the reason I say Joel and Ellie have the potential to be iconic, because not only is it a beloved video game, but the TV show did really well. And if they do like two more seasons that do really well, I think they could cross over to being iconic because then they've crossed over into that mainstream of people who don't play games. So that, I think they have the potential, but they're not there yet um i think more people would know young kratos than old yeah it would be younger one yeah, yeah, yeah. link yes pac-man yes sack boy fuck no no this is 100 like if you want if you want to argue if you want to argue arthur morgan and Shadowheart, maybe more arthur morgan i'll let you argue it sack boy i'm not even gonna let you argue this no he's not iconic at all uh i'd argue he's not even popular he was popular during the PS3, maybe the 4 era, but damn sure not iconic. Sonic is iconic. As much as we clown him and how most of his games are fucking ass, Sonic is iconic. Agent 47 absolutely should not be on this list. No, Agent 47 should not be on this. He's not iconic. No. Uh, Bald-headed white guy. No, you got to stop hating on Sonic, fam. Who's hating? I said he's iconic. Do you listen, Dust? I gave him his clout, especially with the movies. He's 100% iconic. Um, Mario, absolutely. Wait, what? <laughs> hey, 
Hey, yo, I didn't even, yo, I just saved this to talk about it. I didn't even read the list, bro. Laura Croft is number one. Yeah, this list is a joke. Mario should be number one. Mario should be number one. And I could argue probably Pikachu should be number two. Number three, probably Link. We can make the Nintendo jokes all we want. Nintendo got iconic characters. I'd argue that should be the top three. But Laura Croft, if you put her on this list, I wouldn't. I would say she was iconic in the 90s, early 2000s. Not anymore. Like, she doesn't really. I'd put her in the back of the list. Like, you could take Steve off if you want. You could take Shadowheart and Arthur Morgan and put Lara Croft there, but she's definitely not the most iconic character ever. The only the only reason I'm not going to get mad at this list is because they only polled 4,000 people. Gamers make up millions upon millions of people on Earth. This is not a good data set. This doesn't represent anything, so don't get your panties in a bunch. But this, this list, I'm not going to lie, is awful. Um, Ryu? You could make an argue for Ryu. Like, you could take agent out of this put ryu in there ryu is iconic i think uh but, but uh, this new age list jen nah i don't think jen is iconic no if you're gonna pick somebody from tekken who's iconic i would say hahachi but even still that's like debatable uh if we're gonna if we're gonna pick a fighting game it's 100 ryu is iconic chun li She's a tier below Ryu, but like I, if I had to pick one, it'd be Ryu. Scorpion's iconic. Scorpion and Sub-Zero is iconic. They have that. Everybody knows who they are. I would put both of them on the list. King, I wouldn't say King is iconic. No. Uh, Ken's a better choice than Chun. It's pretty much the same damn character. But I wouldn't get your panties in a bunch. This, this is just a fun conversation. 4,000 people. Eh, it's not a big data set. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's a comic book character. Hey, Black Hoodie, you know Spider-Man existed like a hundred years before Marvel Spider-Man on PS4. We found, hey, we found, we spotted the Sony pony in the chat. We spotted the Sony pony in the chat. Like <laughs> Gordon Freeman, I wouldn't put him on this list, no. Them niggas are scared to make fucking Half-Life 3. He is not iconic. He was iconic early 2000s, I'd say, but this day and age, like overall, no. Uh, but da -da 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 -da. This nigga says Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, shit. Cloud, Cloud is iconic amongst gamers, but I don't think he's like like you got. Well, I think I don't know. I could be. When you say iconic, I think that's something that crosses generations. Um, like when you say iconic, if we're talking about rap music, the only names I can think of right now, I don't like his music now, but Kanye, Drake, J Cole, Kendrick. There's not even a top five iconic. Maybe mm, I'll, I'll probably piss off the bars. I'm not gonna throw Nikki in there. Nah. Uh, Lil Wayne. Well, I'm talking about of the current generation. Lil Wayne was of the previous generation. If you want to throw Nikki in there, you can. I I would, but you can if you want to. Uh, <laughs> but you get the point. Like names that cross, like those names, they leave rap music. They're iconic. If that makes sense. Uh, and that's that's the way I'm looking at this list. It's cross generational. He says sexy red. Yeah, all right, bro. Hey, Cass, SITs. <sighs> Nigga said future. Let's get off this list. Y'all biases is crazy. F fucking crazy. Oh, and then State of Decay is supposed to be. I, I can't get into this game. Honey Cocaine. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> this nigga said, what happened to Honey Cocaine? What happened to her? State of Decay 3 T's is supposed to happen at the showcase, too. This nigga said Honey Cocaine. Honey Cocaine dropped one of the worst bars I've ever heard in my life. I ain't wore them J's since the sixth grade. Was that like an insult or something? Like, what the fuck? She became an OnlyFans girl? Is that true or are you making a joke? What else I got for you? Saga Emerald. I heard that name of years. I remember she was she was Tiger's uh right hand man. I remember she was Tiger's right hand man, like her pro his protege. They rapped exactly the same, and then I remember her tour bus got shot up and she quit rap. She's like, Y'all niggas tripping. <laughs> I don't blame her. Is this a game? All that for another fucking turn-based JRPG. Freedom Planet 2. This game didn't come out yet? 
It is out. What is this? Our worst fears realized. A Demon Slayer party? From a time when our land was ravaged by war. A creature bred for battle with a lust for bloodshed. Murga. Murda. I love the first game, uh, Freedom Planet. Oh, it's launching, so it just came out. Okay, this is the launch track. If you like Sonic, this is the best Sonic game out. We need capable fighters to counter the attacks and discover their origin. Magister, we accept your offer. I'm not joking, by the way. I'm not trolling. I haven't played this one, but I played Freedom Planet one. If you like Sonic, Freedom Planet is the best Sonic game out. He said it combines Sonic with a bunch of other like elements from other Sega Genesis games. Operation Kick Butt is a go. And you can play like different characters and shit. Look out, world. Yeah, Sonic for furries, but it's actually good. Nervous as always. It's like Sonic meets Gunstar Heroes, if y'all know that game. That's a super old game. No. This look kind of lit. I'm not joking. I made a video about this game a long time ago. Sonic. It's a damn shame. Gunstar is goaded. Yep. It's like it's like a mix of Sonic, Gunstar Heroes, and Mega Man X. Yeah, it's on PS4. It says it in the. It's literally on every platform because it's like an old school type of game. PS4, five, Xbox One, the series, PC, Switch. It's on everything because I mean, look at the visuals. It's an old school type of game. This is one hundred percent a game you play for the, the the gameplay. There's a story, but like the gameplay is just fire. Gunstar is fire. Yeah, Gunstar is super underrated. If you like old Sega Genesis games, you'll like this game. Trust me. Uh, what is this shit you linked me? Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. Sweep the board. I've never seen the anime, so I don't know any of these characters. Well, I did see the anime. It put me to sleep the first episode, but I don't Demon know. I still Slayer don't know these Horror characters. Board game debut on Nintendo Switch. Get fired up. What is this silly ass music? <laughs> silly ass SpongeBob. This is fucking Demon Slayer Party, Mario Party anime. Playing with up to four players. Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba, sweep the board. Nigga, what? What did you say? Kasamaya, what? Yo, Yaiba. <laughs> Demon Slayer, Kimetsu no Yaiba. Kimetsu no Yaiba. <laughs> Fire the marketing team. Fire the marketing team. The game should be called Demon Slayer Party. It is a party game. So call it Demon Slayer Party. This shit is called Demon Slayer Kimitsu. Yo, are you picking up Demon Slayer Kimitsu? Yo, he's, I can't even pronounce this shit, bro. Fire the marketing team, bro. <laughs> First, select your Demon Slayer character. That's in Japanese. That's not an excuse. They literally have entire teams for porting games over to the West. And they change. Okay, so there's a lot of games in America that are, some, that are called something completely different in Europe. It's called something completely different in Australia and Japan. That's not an excuse. They just said this is how this is an example of what I mean when I say the anime gamers are bottom of the barrel. They're right there with um like sports gamers. They just take anything. They have entire team. Like, what's so hard about creating an action adventure RPG set in a famous anime that's like a spin-off story? Like, and and don't tell me they can't do it. Cause I'm gonna give you an example, right? Think about all the Naruto movies, or think of any anime that has um your resub is cool. Spin-off OVAs. I think that's what they're called. Ideology. I resub. Shout out to East Side with the sub. Appreciate it. Think about all the animes that have spin-off OVA movies where it ties into the main story. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's in the same universe. They could do the same exact thing for video games. Why can you not tell an original story that adds more value, more depth, more interesting things to the characters and the Oh, I know why. Because that takes effort. You said you're using common sense. <laughs> Didn't One Piece do that? That One Piece game fucking sucks, bro. You said, what was that? That dumb diddy gum gum ass open. It was an open world game. It was an open world button masher. I'm talking about a real RPG with some depth. I'm talking about like some Dragon Dogma, Mass Effect shit. Like where there's systems at play. Not a open world. Because the difference between that game that you just mentioned and like the arena brawlers is it's just an arena brawler, but it's single player. Same thing with, um, I don't care if you guys like that shit. What was it? Dragon Ball Kakarot? That shit is lazy. You're retelling the same story. The only difference is it's now no longer a multiplayer 3D arena brawler. It's now a single player. Like, stop. Stop. Nintendo Switch on April 26th, 2024. Who's ready? 
What's the what's the consensus on this conversation? Basically, it's Mario Party st style game with Demon Slayers. This isn't Demon Slayer. This is Party Slayer. Should have called it Party Slayer. Honestly, I'd love more games that follow Mario Party. It's like when board games have their themed editions. Uh, I wouldn't mind more party based games, but not for like anime. I, I halfway agree with her. Um, finally, an anime game that isn't a clone of the rest. I guess uh, bottom of the barrel. They're excited about it. This is for the people who like the Final Fantasy VII mini games. Yeah, possibly. Even with C Flint, Treasure of Oblivion preview. Wait, let's watch the Product trailer first. Not yet rated. Didn't Naruto have an RPG? Yes, in the early days. You weren't alive yet, Ronan. It was like on GameCube and shit. You were still a fetus. I'm Captain Flint, and I chose a pirate's life. Once again, wealth. No, not Flint, Michigan, like Flintlock rifle. Oh my Bad. god. A good sacking plan. Is <laughs> always the best way to recruit good sea dogs. He still is this a fetus. Whole city was full of treasures and just waiting to be looted. I had it all together on land and at sea. Obviously, nothing went as planned. You gonna get some gameplay? Maybe we should have watched the preview. Oh my god. This isn't Boulder's Gate 3. This is fucking Booty's Gate 3. Fucking... Who wants to play a turn-based pirate game? Like, is the skill tree for a pirate interesting enough to do a turn-based RPG? Like, imagine an RPG where all you can do is get drunk, shoot a pistol, a blunderbuss, and punch. There's no abilities in this. Like, what's the passive? Being sober? What you huffing and puffing about, sir? Acting like your life hard, man. <laughs> Don't be busting through the door like that. What you huffing and puffing about, dude? I hear you. Ugh. Thank you for gifting. Your life is not hard. Your money is Shout out to June with the five gifted. Programs that help illiterate inner city youths like that. You okay? Redhead savage knuckles the echidna. Why are you breathing so hard, dude? What you breathing so hard? What you you sniffing something, dude? <laughs> what up, Nor? Ooh, big yawn. You hungry? Yeah, you are. You're hungry. That's what it is. You're throwing a hissy fit. He's hungry. I'm, I'm going to feed you in a minute. One minute, dude. I'm going to take a bathroom break. Okay. Now that we know it is a turn-based game, I have zero interest in watching the preview. I don't want to play a turn-based pirate game. Puffing and puffing with no bills. To yeah, I hear him out. I hear him outside the door. <laughs> All right, nigga. <laughs> What's your beef? <laughs> sure would be nice if my dad talked to me. Strands, a major part of your adventure will be doing battle with the nine massive bosses that wander freely throughout parts of the world. In my time my exploring is the, the same magical way. land of the Enclave, sure could use I some attention. a handful of these formidable monstrosities, which ranged from a robotic bipedal summoner who used his magical staff. For those who missed the stream the other day, uh, Eternal Strands is the new action RPG game from a new studio. I forgot the name of the studio, but this studio is made up of former ve uh, industry veterans that made up Bioware, Ubisoft, and a couple other studios. So apparently this team is pretty talented cover the world in fire to a flying dragon who oppressively hunted me from the skies above. Continuing our month-long coverage of Eternal Strands as part of IGN First. Oh, they got the exclusive info. Hmm. How much they pay for that? <laughs> taking a look at one such oversized oh, baddie, the Ark of the Forge. This game got bad. We're wielding a ton of with a deep love of smelting puny weavers into piles of ash. <laughs> Yeah, this is clean. You can deaf tell they're veterans. So in at all those trends, we have this massive 24. Oh, yellow, yellow brick games. That's the name of the new studio, yellow brick games. Features that we call epics. They roam around the world, and then it's for the players to engage with them or not. But they are at the source of every power, magical power you're gonna get in the game. It looks like uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. So today we're unveiling the Ark of the Forge, a huge towering construct of about 23 to 25 meters. Uh, it was built by the Enclave to be able to craft very huge structure. My, my biggest question about this game is the combat looks fun, but it looks like you're just in one big kind of biome, like an arena, and you just fight mon is, is, is it a, 
I would like to, I would like to is this a boss rush game or is there actual like adventure to it? That's what I'm confused about. I feel like it might get a little boring if there's just like three or four bosses to fight and like that's it. Uh. Easily. He is a blacksmith at heart. That's why he has, why he say it like that. Y'all heard that? He a black. Why he say it like he that? He is a blacksmith at heart. <laughs> He's a DUI Smith. He's a DUI Smith. Why is he black? A giant, uh, flaming He's hammer. A blackie. Just to be able to help that society yeah. to evolve. The yeah, I know it's his accent. I'm just fucking around. Yeah, it's like the <laughs> two third mark in the game, deep inside the forge of, uh, like, in the underground of the uh, enclave society. You know, one of his trademark visual. The thing you will notice, uh, the first is, of course, the giant flaming hammer. So, spoiler alert, he does use this giant hammer to create fire in the environment. The giant hammer. Hit the ground with it, it makes like a lot of flames everywhere, makes the environment super hot. So then you need to avoid not only like, you know, the giant hammer, which is enough like talking to trouble on its own, but also yeah, what that dude. creates in the environment, which, you know, when you fight with him after like, you know, two, three minutes, you can get into a situation where you look at the battlefield and you don't know where to go because there's so much fire everywhere. Yeah. Like it's not one and done. The fire stays in the environment and it does affect the battlefield a lot. He also has like a, an anger management problem because he can get into like if you start. Do I kiss Aki in the mouth? Yeah, make out with him all the fucking time, nigga. I'm gonna give you a 600 for that question. And make out with that nigga all the damn time. You saw it. Doing a lot of damage to him, he's gonna get angry, like flame up its entire body and run directly at you to this smash This is a black him. household. I don't know why you asked that question. The way he can react to you is if you climb on him, you know, because he's quite dangerous when you're on the ground. So you're like, oh, I'm gonna climb on him. You know, that sounds reasonable. But then <laughs> Stop you letting your intrusive thoughts off, get to you. Most importantly, he can just grab you and just like crush you. Uh, in his hands. And then throw you back in the fire. And just like, yep, in the fire you go. The location at which you fight the Ark of the Forge is also important because they're gonna be roaming around. There's like people the in the background. I feel like they told me, yeah, make sure you like you're doing something while we're filming this. That we have in a game. So some maps are gonna be way more difficult for you to did, did Immortals Phoenix so people make forest, this? You can imagine um, everything's you know, it's funny. I didn't even think of that because I did say it looks like a Mortal's Phoenix. Uh, yeah, this new studio is made up of people from Bioware and Ubisoft. So that maybe, maybe some people who worked on Immortals worked on this game and that explains the art style. That might make sense. Gonna become I mean, that like does make sense why it might be like that. But so I don't know if they did. Caves, then that might be a little bit easier. The weather also in Back the caves is, is kind of all chaotic. So sometimes you have big shift of weather. So if you can manage to fight or encounter the Ark of the Forge when there's a big successor. flash free. Nah, it's not a spiritual successor because Immortals Phoenix was just as much an action. It was an adventure puzzle game just as much as it was an action game. This looks like more of a straight up. This looks like Dragon's Dogma minus the adventure. Full of snow, you might have a better chance to defeat. So as Fred mentioned, it's really uh, good for you as a player to engage with the Ark of the Forge during a flash freeze because everything is cold, so it lessens its power. However, we also have droughts in the game, which has the opposite effect, where everything becomes hotter. So the air in the level will actually get to a higher temperature easier, which that is not to your advantage. So maybe if you're not geared for the fight and you're in a drought and you see a fire creature in the level, maybe you should reconsider. So the Ark of the Forge, as you can guess, is a fire-based creature. So once you defeat him, you will be able to get uh, a firepower thread. Oh, that's cool! I reward you with able stuff. to use in your uh, own toolkit, and we try to keep like a link between what the player gets and what the, the the epic uses, so you'll be able to understand what you just gained from it. For more on Yellow Brick Games' upcoming boss-slaying adventure, Eternal Strands, check out the action-packed reveal trailer. And stay tuned for more exclusive reveals. So there are other enemies to fight. He did say in there that there, there are levels. So it, if I had to take a guess, it's probably like um, probably like Liza P, a little bit more linear, or like um, Bloodborne, where there's other enemies to fight in the level, and then at the end of the level, you get a big boss fight. That's the kind of the vibe I'm getting, maybe. All month long is part of our ongoing IGN First coverage. And for everything else, 
stick with IGN. Too woke, it should have been a white man. I feel that. I do feel uncomfortable anytime there's a video game character that's not a white man. <laughs> I can't say that with a straight face. Uh, <laughs> looks cool, though. We'll keep an eye on that. I wonder when this is coming out. It doesn't say. It looks all right. Yeah, it looks cool. Um, Helldivers 2, official war bond trailer. New content? New armor. New freedom. Yeah, the DEI Hokage. New capes. The grenade pistol. New weapons. Will any of them be good, though? Freedom. A crossbow. I ain't no way this shit is. This shit better be OP out. Crossbow in space is crazy. They added a little slide mechanic. Really? Yeah, that shit better shoot nukes. It's great. I think I'm only like level eight in this game. I do not play this game at all. Yep, it's that OP. What does DEI mean? I'm trying to figure it out. Um, the actual literal definition is diversity, inclusion, or something like that. But DI is just a new way for the internet to call us niggas without saying it. It's just me as niggas. Digimon Adventure 2. What is this? Digimon Adventure 2, the beginning, official trailer. Aren't those two? Oh, this is an anime. It's not a game. You really believe it? That unconditional friendship truly exists. They're millennials. Something as incredible as that. How could it be real? Digimon. Digital monster. Humans and Digimon aren't meant to be together when they are. All right, Sasuke. <laughs> Diversity, equity, inclusion. There you go, Did niggas. You Hey, what the heck's going on? We have to do something or the whole world will suffer. Oh, the old gang is coming back? It started because of you and what you wished for. The key to stopping this is Louis. Okay, guys. Right, let's go. Right. The BBC Megazord. We have to try and see things from each other's perspective. Hey, David. Yeah, I know what we have to do. But I have full faith in He was Davis before he was Rock Lee. You see? That's what friendship is. And go! Digimon Adventure Zero Two. Is this an anime or a movie? Nijimon. Is this an anime or a movie? What the fuck is this fucking thumbnail? It's a movie? Right, I'm, I'm gonna probably watch this. Oh yeah, Blu-ray. Yeah, it's a movie. I'd watch it. Da, 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 da. Let's see how divers did that. I don't really care about Hellblade. Um, how Hell Hellblade's taking immersion to the next level. Should I entertain this for shits and giggles? Hellblade 2 is shaping up to be another beautiful nightmare. Senior Saga's combat looks beautiful. Uh, for shits and giggles, I'll watch the preview. I'll watch it. Maybe, maybe it'll change my mind. Who's playing on my phone? Neo Sprint 1.0. What is this? Oh, fuck no. Sinos, would you Crazy lady, the game. Sinos, would you now watch the Mavs highlights? Shut up. It's just a some basketball. Now, it wasn't outside I was safe. As I slowly worked my way through an Icelandic settlement freshly ravaged by rampaging Northmen, I found myself flanked by bubbling volcanic pools and a pile of mangled corpses left to rot by their creators. Ahead, along a bloodied path stretching into the distance, dread fueled bellows sound the game is gorgeous. ominous pulsating glow. It was a nightmare scenario. It, it, it kind of proves what I was talking about earlier. Like all the gameplay they showed, it's just her walking in one on one fights. I don't understand why, why people are so upset. This game's at 120 frames? Why you need 120 frames to rock across a bridge? Like <laughs> this shit feels looks like a tech demo half the damn time. Await me in Senua's Saga Hellblade 2. 
It's terrifying. So See, I don't, I don't like that. Is that how the game plays the first one? All that whispering in my fucking ear, I don't like that. Defense of the first game, Senua is now on a journey to Iceland to hunt down the Vikings who destroyed her home. But all not the time. all this as yeah, it I don't seems want to on the Scandinavian island. As otherworldly creatures like Draugr and giants roam its shores. I spent a good portion of my playtime listening to the death echoes of a recently pillaged village and learning about what had happened there before moving inland to be welcomed by a frightening ritual scene delivered from hell. Here, so I met a mysterious angels. man set to be the ritual's next sacrifice. Before Senua intervened in an attempt to rescue him. He clearly has a connection to Senua's past, but the rest remains unknown. Much of the story of Hellblade 2 is still like shrouded in mystery. People do love the game. I mean, it doesn't look like a bad game. I would never call this a bad game. This is just not a game for me. Three to me, despite having played nearly an hour of it. This sort of story first ethos in a high production value package is one you'd more typically expect from a PlayStation Studios game. Not only in Hellblade's aesthetic and setting similarities with so many monitors God of War. <laughs> Why he gotta say that shit, bro? He said, I'm not gonna lie, the quality and the production on this shit is so good. I thought I was playing a PlayStation game. God damn. Well, <laughs> the <laughs> is more mature subjects of family oh my God, and fucking funny. health issues. As those familiar with the original will know, though, Hellblade 2 plays much differently from. Yeah, that man threw a stray. Instead, opting to emphasize even further its priority of narrative ambitions over action. Speaking of action, this is a game of exploration and extermination. And that brings us to combat. <laughs> <laughs> Encounters may seem familiar at first. Is they still Microsoft take place in it is. arenas and demand every enemy be defeated before progressing on. But there are God damn, those visuals look crazy. Found as well. Each swing of the sword comes with a head. You know what it is? I, it's the gameplay that... It, like, I, I, it's already like the talking stuff in your ear that annoyed me. But the gameplay, because like, I'm a gameplay first, it never sold me. It reminds me a lot of that iOS game that was popular like 10 years ago that Epic Games made. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The one where you would have to like swipe the screen and like duck under and then like everybody copied that shit. I feel like this is like that game with better graphics. So I was never sold. Infinity Blade. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of Infinity Blade. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't want to pay 60, 70 bucks to play Infinity Blade in 4K weight to it, emphasizing the damage every plunge into a foe's flesh causes. Dodging and parrying remain key components, just as reading the rhythm of your opponent's it doesn't really play like that. is vital to your survival. True. These tales are something you'll need to keep an extra I Just from like the eye to. test, it just as looks like it. the window for Senua to meet steel with steel appears far less forgiving this time around. The improvements to combat were best displayed in an intense battle that occurred right at the end of the playable sequence. A procession of around a dozen enemies... It'll be on Game Pass? Ah! Oh, when this shit come out, if it's on Game Pass, maybe I'll try it then. I didn't know. It was, I forgot it was coming to Game Pass. If it's free, I mean, fuck it. I got Game Pass. When this shit come out again? Uh, is it, you, you nigga said free? <laughs> oh, shit. I forgot. That's right. This is a Game Pass game. Hold on. What's this? Uh, Hellblade 2. It comes out in May. I don't think anything comes out in May. I might play it then. Fuck it. I ain't playing the first one. I'll just watch us. We're going to watch. I'm going to watch a summary on YouTube the day the game come out and then we're going to start number two. All right, let's do it. No That's fucking about. funny. This battle demonstrated the increased variety. I already paid for my year of Game Pass. I might as well. The shadows to replace their fallen allies. They delivered both quick ranged attacks and heavy close up blows. That I'm treated. I'm down if it's free. Rusty skills to the test. All of this you know occurred it. while all hell seemingly broke loose around me. As innocent victims meant swift and vicious demises, while fire, flames, and all manner of horror filled each corner of the screen. That was a fire was transition. Exciting and felt like an improvement over the original's rigid by comparison combat. It's not. Really Reinventing the wheel here, but turns things up a few notches, adding a desperate edge to each encounter. Combat director Benoit Macon cites Game of Thrones Battle of the Bastards as an inspiration, in which an outnumbered Jon Snow takes on enemies one by one amid a frantic battle. The variety of swings, blocks, and parries executed within the minute long scene were the key takeaways, and resulted in Ninja Theory making every fight a one on one duel. Action can happen around Senua, but there's never more than one enemy attacking her at any time. Instead so he confirms it. The scale of fights, there is a far greater increase in the. Like it sucks that it's locked at 30 FPS on the Xbox, but he just confirmed you are never doing anything more than a one v one, and the camera is fixed on the action. Like there's, 
it doesn't need to be that damn smooth like it's they're going for the cinematic number effect. of different combat animations i saw many varied brutal sword swings and you're not going to need crazy reflexes it sounds like of encounters each performed with believable weight and purpose this combat approach along with the environment story and visual design emerged power of unreal into senua's struggle unsurprisingly so yeah no back shots this focus on the cinematic performance capture has been used for each and every battle maneuver resulting in what feels like a real step up when compared to the first game. Nothing illustrates this quite like the fact that it took around 70 hours to record all of Hellblade 2's combat moves That's in crazy. a large purpose-built motion capture stage at Ninja Theory Studio. The original Hellblade's combat performance capture, on the other hand, was recorded in just two days in a small boardroom, where if a sword was swung too high, it would hit the ceiling. The extra time taken and effort put in really shows, with fights seamlessly flowing as each enemy is dispatched in a different manner from the one before it. Outside of combat, puzzles will all- She looks like she's always struggling. I mean, the game's about, it's, the game's literally about mental health. So, I mean, that makes sense. So. Also be largely familiar. Shut the Euro Mechi with the sub. I can afford a retwist for my locks. It's happening again. It's him. There. He is dying again. As I tried to leave the battle-torn village, I was met with a swirling vortex of bones and limbs, emitting an unwelcoming red light. <laughs> in order to remove this barrier, I'd need to find three runic shapes in the world, which required a reasonable level Off of Off topic, do you think this year's lineup of thing. games could be they better than... No means I don't think it'll be better. I don't think it'll be worse. Like, this year, I think it's just an average year for game releases. This fall is kind of weak, uh, but I don't think it'll be better. Last year was crazy. Like, this fall, the only thing that's been confirmed to be coming out is Star Wars Outlaws. Between, like, all the bangers have already came out. Helldivers 2, Tekken 8, and Rise of Ronin and Dragon's Dogma 2. After that, you got this in May. Um, at the end of April, you have Stellar Blade. Um, then after that, Star Wars Outlaws. You got the Elden Ring DLC. Just a lot of just good games. I think it'll. It's a lot of good games coming out this year. But I don't think you're gonna see a lot of like. Oh yeah, Wukong in uh in August. I don't think you're gonna see anything like revolutionary. Just like I feel like there's there's it's gonna be a lot of solid eights this year. Overly I'm playing probably Dragon's Dog too tonight. Help but feel I've done a few too many times already in the original. I hope these challenges. But there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> as the adventure moves on, it's an adventure whose cinematic aspirations can be felt in every frame. In part thanks to an anamorphic cinema lens attached to the in-game camera. Final Fantasy Rebirth came out already too. I forgot about that. Yeah. Along rugged Scandinavian coastlines in Ingmar Bergman's The Seventh Seal and the bold flashes of otherworldly color, synonymous with Dario Argento movies can be observed, but by far the most tangible touchstone is the films of Robert Eggers. Hellblade infuses the mythic Norse setting of the Northmen with the murmuring dread that serves as the undercurrent to the witch's folk horror. It's not all horror in this world, though, with plenty of room left for wonder too. An example of this is a new type of puzzle that emerges in these lands more organically. Puzzles. A rock may appear as a face when viewed from a certain You're angle. You're not hyped for Indiana Jones? No. On to reveal a new path. At the end of this <laughs> no. path sits a tree that rewards you with extra story details. <laughs> no, this sort of you. trick of the eye environmental puzzle only helps you embed yourself into the world. Uh, Indiana Jones just sounds like a headache to me. Like the graphics look nice, but like the, the meat and potatoes of Indiana Jones would be exploring, fighting, and puzzles, but it's all in first person. And I'll be honest, I do not want to do Indiana Jones level puzzles in first person. It, it's going to be some shit super obvious. It's going to be behind me, but I don't even know because it's first person and my scope is really limited. There's no environmental clues. I just, I just feel like that game's going to give me a headache. That, that's a game I'll play. There's nothing else to play at the time. Even further. Talking of Senua's nah, mind, I'm not we can't not here. touch on Melina <laughs> Jürgen's impressive performance as the protagonist. There's something here. They are not I need to find out what it is. In many ways, it is key to the immersion, demonstrated in how the camera finds every opportunity to close in on her. It's all a credit to the top-tier performance capture technology and Jürgen's wildly expressive eyes and subtle facial twitches. That face regularly looks set to burst with fear, something the psychosis-induced voices of the Furies residing in her head only add to. Perpetually chattering voices can be annoying in games, and if done poorly here, could easily result yeah, in a lot of of the many no, shades of Smeagol. Really. But it's to its credit that how I need to beat I need to beat Dragon's Dog. Screams never irritate. Because I need to beat Rise of Ronin, and, and I need to beat Final Fantasy, and, and then I got to beat Stellar's Blade. Top tier sound design that, much like in the first game, up, really buddy? comes to life when played with headphones, allowing for the binaural audio recordings to surround your head like it's in the center of a whirlpool. This is our quest. This is our destiny. 
all of this focus on presentation and story does run the risk of sending you gotta be bloodborne gameplay. not always no thank you i don't i don't want to be bloodborne i'm good at that i don't play games that run at 12 frames per second which is so interesting to me that like niggas will niggas will tweet niggas will tweet i love bloodborne and then in the very next tweet, Hellblade 2 is trash because it runs at 30 frames. Last time I checked, Bloodborne didn't even run at 30 frames. <laughs> and I already know, that was on the PS4. That was on the PS4. Oh, I thought the PS4 was a powerful piece of hardware. That's why you niggas don't want to give it up and get a PS5. Oh, which one is it? It's being the focus and ultimately feeling a little one note. This is certainly a criticism that can be fairly leveled at its predecessor. And from the 45 minutes I've played of Hellblade 2, it's not initially apparent that things have moved on a great deal since then. Puzzles and combat definitely feel more refined. I'd rather be deaf than listen to a Logic song? What does that got to do with anything? <laughs> 2017, albeit with interesting new wrinkles. But that familiarity never diminished. Red Dead 2 was the, the best RPG Hellblade ever and it was 30 fps so good though its ambitious narrative and accomplished cinematic framing far outweigh whatever shortcomings may be hidden underneath and the incredible technology powering its beautifully ugly world is a sight to behold it's all shaping up to be another riveting haunting and uncompromisingly immersive nightmare of both senua's and ninja theory's creation sounds like he, the story and the production's fire but he did say that the combat kind of got tiring let me find out the game's a little boring and one I can't wait to both enter and escape later this year. Baggies number one. Baggies gonna have For more on Hellblade 2 and everything else, stick with IGN. I've seen so many PS5 bundles at Costco's. I see PS5s everywhere. At this point, niggas just can't afford it. And that's okay, just admit it. Doggies number one. Doggies gonna have some fun. All right, uh, uh, let's get on the game.